In this video, we will take a step back and talk about a feature in Next.js that not a lot of people talk about. I'm talking about prefetching. So you can actually prefetch routes in Next.js before the user even actually clicks them or even submits a form. So how can you do that? So the documentation is hidden way beneath links. So if you actually go to the linking and navigating section of the Next.js documentation, you can actually find the link to the use router hook, which is for the app router, which, which only works in the client components. So if you click that, you'll be pushed down to this part where which says you can use the user auto hook. But if you go to the API reference, which not a lot of people touch, you will see a lot of different things here like router.push, which is used to redirect and add to the history of the browser. Dot or dot replace, which is used to redirect, but remove, but not actually add the history to the browser. Router.refresh to just refresh the page. And then there is the router.prefetch. Prefetch the provided route for faster collide side transitions. and. I'm pretty sure you must have already saw this function. Like when you're working with use router, this might have actually popped up and uh, you might not have used it and you might have just forgot about it. But I'm pretty sure you must have seen this, but uh, I think that uh, it's the same story for me. Like I saw it and never used it, but I thought that let's try to see what it is. And it turned out to be the pretty cool thing. So if you go to the prefetch section, we can see a lot of different things. Prefetching is a way to preload a route in background before the user visits it. There are two ways the routes are prefetched in Next.js. The link component, routes are automatically prefetched as they become visible in the user's viewport. This is very important. So prefetching is not anything new. We have been doing it for a very long time. So like if you're using link component, that means that the page is already being prefetched. Uh, given that the page is static and only the static parts are being prefetched and not the dynamic parts. Prefetching happens when the page first loads or when it comes into view through scrolling. And then there is a, the video topic router of prefetch. The use router hook can be used to prefetch routes programmatically. So in this video, we are going to do that. And that's because like in forms, you are not going to use link components, right? You're going to use buttons, which actually have an action. And uh, how are you going to actually prefetch the routes? You don't actually need to do that, but I think this is a very good quality of life changes to your website. It might help you boost the performance of it just by a bit. And I think it's helpful. So I think you should know about it. The links prefetch behavior is different for static and dynamic routes. For static route, it just defaults to true. The entire route is prefetched. But for dynamic route, prefetch is set to automatic. And I want to let you know that this is very important and this will play a huge part even though this is for link but we might also uh, have behaviors for router or prefetch and this is very important prefetch is default to automatic only the shared layout down the render tree of components until the first loading.js file is prefetched and cached for 30 seconds this is a very important line so like if you are looking to prefetch a route the dynamic parts won't be loaded until you pass in the correct configuration. And I think this is the most ideal way. So like if you have a layout with things like you need to already fetch like the user the user stuff in navbar or stuff, something like that, this is the best way. So like all the stuff will be prefetched and the only part that needs to be loaded, which determines like if you have an input that heavily, that heavily changes the page, this is the best way to do this. Uh, and uh, this reduces the cost of fetching an entire dynamic route and it means you can show an instant loading state for better visual feedback to user. So in this video, we are going to see this and we are also going to use this specific behavior and we are going to have a loading.js file and we are going to see how to do it. But first of all, let's start with the basics. All right, so this is a blank Next.js application. I'm going to start building stuff and I'm going to show you how prefetching works using router.prefetch. So this is going to be the index page.tsx file, but I'm going to also create a new route. I'm going to call it second. And inside this, I'm going to create a new file called page.tsx. And here we are going to have a simple component. And this is going to be a, just a server side component because we are going to simulate a delay so that uh, we can um, say that we, uh, we can simulate that we are actually trying to fetch some data. So here, what we are going to do is we can do, this needs to be an async function for that. And then we can do, uh, actually await new promise and uh, github copilot can help me thank you so much except for 1000 i think we should keep it to 5000 so i want to say that component loaded after five seconds i want to show you what happens but before we do that i want to actually force this to be a dynamic route so i think uh, export const uh, no, it's not like that. 
you know what i was correct so export const dynamic dyna i cannot type uh, is equal to force dynamic all right so what this will do is in production environments this will actually make this page forcefully dynamic there will be no static site generation so why are we doing that because like in production what will happen that it will actually render this uh, component and it will serve it as a static file and this waiting will never happen we want to tell next is that hey this is always going to be dynamic so always simulate this delay so yeah this is what we are doing and why have we added this but like in development it will just work right but the problem is that prefetching works only in production and not in development so we will be building next years and we will be also trying to use it in production and see how prefetching works but now that we have the loading file completed the file which is going to be loading uh, now let's go to the index file and i'm going to remove everything here we do not need absolutely anything i'm going to create a new button here i'm going to say take me to page 2 or i can say take me to second and now i can create a function which says uh, const uh, handle click that works too and uh, here we are just gonna do this should not be an async function it's not needed we need to actually import router so const router is equal to use router and this is important because we are using app router so we should use next slash navigation if you're using pages router feel free to use the next slash router one and now here we can simply go ahead and say router dot push second now first of all i want to show you what is if we just uh, use this behavior so i'm just gonna have an on click here and i'm just gonna say handle click so the problem here is that i'll show you in development mode itself but it's going to be similar for production you know what let's just build for production so i'm just gonna do pnpm build and pnpm start this will actually build our Next.js application and it will start the production server which means that if it's actually statically building our second file it will not have any loading so i would just want to show you that and there is a problem here invariant expected out to be mounted oh yeah i think that error was because this is supposed to be a client component so because we are using the hook of course uh, let's see if it works on development first and then we are going to try to build so i'm just going to do pnpm dev and uh, let's go back to do local host 3000 it's going to take a little while and uh, let's just wait yeah i mean it works so let's try to build it and uh, yeah let's check on production we are not going to test on development we are going to test on production today we are going to break production <laughs> yeah that was not a funny one anyways <laughs> all right so let's do yeah it's already started now we can just go back and we can just refresh this is the production one and let's click on take me to second it's i have already clicked that it's taking time so i think after five seconds yeah it's done after component load after five seconds so if you don't believe me i'm just gonna copy this and i'm just gonna paste this here and see if it takes five seconds or not so yeah i think i think that's that's well over five seconds perfect now what i want to do is i want to whenever this page is loaded i want to actually prefetch the second page so how am i going to do the best way i can think of is use effect but like uh, your use case might have something else so like uh, if the user triggers some action you might want to prefetch a page like if you all if you already know if a user is going to go to a page you might already might as well just prefetch the page so what i'm going to do in use effect i'm going to do router dot prefetch second now what will happen uh, if i just save this and uh, let's go back i'm just gonna need to build this again uh, but first let me show you if it works in uh, development it's going to take some time perfect i'm just gonna wait for five seconds okay take me to second now it's gonna take five seconds and then we are gonna go to the second page this is happening in development mode so like if you're testing prefetching in development mode just understand that this is not going to work but what if we go ahead and uh, actually do this one pnpm build and pnpm start and i'm pretty sure it shouldn't work this time as well because we have missed a config hold on i'm just gonna wait for this to complete and let's see if it happens or not one two three four 
Fuck, I'm doing counting here. Anyways, take me to second. I mean, oh, okay, it worked. Anyways, yeah. So like you see, I, I just clicked there and it just instantly worked. I'll just go back and I'll show you. So I'm just gonna go back and I'll show you. I'll tell you when I'm going to click. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm clicking now. Take me to second. Instant. But if I take this one and paste it here, it's going to take five seconds to load. Yeah, perfect. So do you understand what's happening here? The route which you are trying to access in the second page is getting prefetched while you are on the first page. And I think this is a very good thing because like uh, if you have a form and you know that the person is going to get redirected to a page, you might as well just preload it as much as you can until the actual dynamic thing comes in. So why am I saying the dynamic comes in and load as much as you can? Because you can actually have a loading.js file. But before we actually go, there is a config you can have here kind and this needs to be from prefetch kind and uh, we need to actually have we actually have three stuff here so if you have auto it's going to be the default behavior if you have full it's going to be actually f just rendering the page fully like even if you have loading it's going to just have the entire route full so like if you have a dynamic route you probably might not want to do it like if you have a route based on like the user's response you want to make something on the other page you might not want to use the full one and temporary so so if you just hover about it you will get it temporary prefetch entries added to the cache this is used when prefetch false is used in next link or you when you push a route programmatically so i think it's for like 30 seconds i read the next just documentation it uh, caches your prefetch data for 30 seconds so yeah this is the kind we are not going to use it since we it's just working we do not need it okay now we are going to look at the second case so like in this case what we are going we are just passing the kind as auto when it says if the page is dynamic prefetch the page partially if static prefetch the data fully so what happened while testing is that i created a dynamic route and it just prefetched it entirely which is not supposed to happen and we'll see why what what's happening right now so in we have a second but you will see a difference we have a loading and layout files if we go to a layout.tsx file we the layout i am setting a delay for the layout to load at uh, five seconds so we are just gonna have that here and uh, in loading.tsx i'm just gonna have a loading like this and in page.tsx i have changed this to 10 seconds because the layout also has uh, five seconds so i want to have a proper delay in between both of them so what's happening here is like uh, first the layout will be rendered and then the page will be rendered and uh, before the page is actually rendered you will see the loading screen so according to the auto one so if you ch check the auto option it says that if the page is dynamic prefetch the page data partially and what does it mean by partially so if you go back you will see uh, only the shared layout down the render tree of components until the first loading.js file is prefetched and cached for 30 seconds so this is the behavior i think the one which we were doing before was temporary one but uh yeah this is the one which will actually do the do all the rendering until the loading and once the user actually goes to that page then it will start actually doing its stuff i think this will be the best option for you if you are actually looking to set the pages content according to user's input so let's go back and test. I have already built and run the application. I'm going to reload this page and I'm going to wait for like 10 seconds. Till then, why not you just click, go ahead and click the subscribe button because I'm going to bring a lot of valuable content on this channel. So make sure you go and click the subscribe button while we are at it. So yeah, I think we are good to go. Now I'm just going to click on take me to second. Now it's just going to do layout loaded already because uh, it was already loaded. Now, now if we go wait for this, for 10 seconds uh yeah it's just a five second but we have set the delay for 10 seconds what will happen if i just copy and paste this route like this it's going to take at least 10 seconds so let's just wait for it it, it took five seconds for the layout now it's going to take another five or 10 seconds for yeah it took like five seconds for the page because the page also started loading uh, when the layout started loading and if you watched my read with Athava episode number three we saw how uh the uh, layout is not exactly a middleware the page can still be rendered without the layout 
so i think next js is doing that be like behind the scenes like it's starting loading the layout plus the page at the same time so that there's a lot less delay so yeah uh, i think route prefetch is like a very good thing to know i think it can have a little quality of life changes here and there like so if your website is not performing that well i think if you just plug this in it might help to increase your website's performance so yeah i think i thought that this is pretty interesting so i i thought to share it with you with you so yeah so yeah that's it for this video i hope you like this video and learn something new if you want to support me go ahead and click the subscribe button hit the like button and share this video with your friends so that they enjoy the same level of knowledge that you're enjoying right now if you have any suggestions about any type of content make sure you leave that in the comments below as well and i'll make sure to make that kind of video so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one bye